Fired up. Fired up. All right. Hey, guys. Welcome to Spring Clean. So this is our show on detoxifying your home and body. I'm Dr. Lee Thomas. Joining me is Tasha Ridings. Hi. So she is a certified, what I would call healthy mom, uh, clean eating and environmental enthusiast. So when we talked this year and mapped out our schedule and said we were going to do a toxicity talk, you should have just seen her light up. So she's lived all across the U.S., um, you know, from ski resorts in Colorado to spending years working in Yellowstone. Um, she loves being outdoors and loves living a healthy lifestyle. So really, I'm just enthused to have you join us. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited to get started. Yeah. So just to preframe this a little bit for you guys, anything that we talk about toxins and toxicity and living a healthy lifestyle, obviously, there's so much to cover. But what we're going to do today is break down the six most common sources of toxins in your life and the action steps to clean them up and allow your body to be as healthy as possible by getting detoxified and back to your best health ever. So those are food, water, air, cleaners, containers, and cosmetics. Okay, we're going to give you the action steps for those as well as what supplements can help with detoxing, the tests that we can perform in our office to help get to the root of those metabolic and functional issues. All right. And we're also going to provide in the links below a DIY cleaning guide, a toxic ingredient list, yep. and our favorite websites to help you begin your detoxification process. So as we get started, you may feel very overwhelmed, Yep. but we don't want you to panic. Detoxing your home and body is a lifelong journey, and we're just here to get you started on the process. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Every single day, month, I'm learning more information on this. So again, if this is your first time engaging in some of these things like that, give yourself some grace. We're going to go through some things where you're going to hear what we say and go, oh my gosh, I've used that for years. We were just talking about a chemical uh, with Tasha and she's like, oh my gosh, I know so many things that are in and I know so many people who use those things and she freaked out. <laughs> and But I get it. I mean, I do the same thing sometimes. I'll be using a product and then all of a sudden I'll look at the back and they'll change the ingredient list or add another toxin or something like that. And I'm like, man, I've been giving this to my kids. So don't get overwhelmed. Yeah, just one step at a time. Yeah. So we're going to start, again, there's six major toxins that we're going to go over. And the first one we're going to start by talking about is food. Obviously, this is a big one and you need food. So not all food is toxic. But the problem is right now is that, you know, the best way I can describe it is if, if you're waiting on, you know, the FDA to regulate your food for you, if you're waiting on the FDA to tell you what food is healthy, what food is bad, what you should and shouldn't be eating... You're dead in the water. I, yeah, you're, you're way behind the times. The problem is, is that toxins in food are absolutely plethorous. And the issue is, is most toxic foods don't get banned until they actually start causing problems in humans, whether it's from complaints, whether it's from people, you know, reporting developing cancer or tumors or issues like yeah. that. So you can't wait for the FDA to ban things. They're usually 10 to 15 years behind the times when it comes to that. Absolutely. Yeah. Let me give you just a quick example of this. This is in June of 2019. The FDA got a report that there were some not good substances being used in some in some products in the grocery store. Um, it's called uh, poro, polyfluoral alcohol substances or PFAs. PFAs. And they basically are like a emulsificant. They're like a greasy substance that kind of prolongs shelf life. So anyways, they, they studied a lot of different foods in grocery stores. Pineapples, chocolate milk, baked goods, meats, sweet potatoes. I mean, they found these high levels of compounds in all of those things. And we know that PFAs, they cause reproductive and developmental disorders, liver and kidney issues. They have immunological effects as well. And they've been studied in animals, not humans, but to cause cancer and tumors. And so this is literally a year ago where they're finding these substances regularly in the grocery stores in the food items that we commonly buy. So again, waiting on the FDA to say, hey, that food's bad, don't eat that one, or assuming if it's in the grocery store, it has to be healthy, is I think one of the biggest faux pas that we can make. Yeah, it's a sad world that we live in, that we can't trust the yeah. food on the shelf. Yeah. So here's a couple of the common food additives that are still allowed to be put inside of your grocery stores um, that you want to work on avoiding, obviously. Number one would be sodium nitrate. Um, you're going to commonly find this being advertised when it comes to like lunch meats and products like that. And in fact, now what you're seeing is a lot of food researchers are becoming hip to this. So they're saying no nitrates, no, no, no nitrates, which is obviously good, but it doesn't just mean that a food is healthy. You can still have unorganic meat, 
it can be processed with different things. But basically, to give you an idea of what this is, sodium nitrite or nitrates is one of the worst offenders. We've known since 2003 that that is a known carcinogen. Um, those compounds have been shown to be carcinogenic in animal studies. So just a common example of something that's you can still buy it in the store right now. We know that it can cause a lot of developmental and hormone issues in humans. Yeah, and it's a staple in the American diet, I think, as a sandwich for lunch. Yeah, absolutely. If your turkey, your ham, your cheese products, all of those different things, the deli meat section, commonly I see tons of people order things from there and they don't really think about that thing. You know yeah. what I mean? Another yep. chemical that's been um, found is potassium bromate, which is added to breads to increase volume. And it's been linked to cancer in humans. Yeah. And it's still on the shelf. Yeah. Yeah. And the one that you swallowed up about on the bromine list is brominated vegetable oil. So yeah. if you think about this, you know, in the periodic table of elements, we have an element that we all need, which is iodine. That's important for thyroid function. Bromine is a halogen, just like iodine. And so bromine actually can competitively inhibits for iodine. We don't get a lot of iodine in our diet naturally anyways. That's why we actually iodize salt. You know, your sea vegetables, are, we're going to get a lot of iodine. But if you're eating these azodicarbonamides, these potassium bromates, these brominated vegetable oils, and you're getting a lot of them in your diet, they're going to con competitively inhibit for iodine with your thyroid and lead to hormone disruption, thyroid dysfunction, all of those things. You were talking about a friend you have that loves that stuff. Yeah, it consumes Mountain Dew by the gallons, I think. And I think if they knew that's what was causing their thyroid issue, maybe they wouldn't drink the Mountain Dew anymore. Yeah. yeah. yeah and yeah. what's even crazier to me is that bromate is a poison and can cause damage and birth defects. Yep. And it's not required to be on a food label. Yep. Our yeah. food system is failing us. Yeah. The most common thing that you'll find that in is, um, is like your citrus beverages, like your artificially sweetened citrus beverages. It's a common thing to have in there. Um, refined vegetable oil is another big one I just want to comment on because that is one that Every single person eats if you're eating any type of boxed, canned, pre-prepared food. If you're eating out at restaurants a lot and you're not careful where you're going or what you're ordering, refined vegetable oil is basically filled with omega-6 fatty acids, which are highly inflammatory. Those are things that lead to inflammation, weight gain, hormone problems, thyroid issues, cancers, you name it. It's, it's the biggest cause of inflammation inside of our body. And again, that's something that's commonly put in almost every single food. And actually a lot of people think, oh, well, it's vegetables. It's oil from vegetables. It has to be healthy. Definitely not. Definitely not. Definitely not. You know, you've got your artificial sweeteners as well. There are so many atoms. I can't talk about all of them, but again, it's, it's really about understanding that you can't just go in a grocery store, pull something off the shelf, look at the front label and say, oh, this must be healthy. You've really got to do your research and do your homework when it comes to eating good, healthy food. Absolutely. Cool. So the next thing on food, and this is a big one for me too, it's, it's nutrient depletion. So one of the concerns that I have whenever we're trying to eat food and, and be healthy is that a lot of farms now are not using what are called regenerative farming practices. And so basically what we're doing is we're planting the same crops season after season or planting too many crops to get high yields. And what we're finding is that the actual nutrient content of the same food that we're eating, we're eating broccoli just like we ate broccoli 20 years ago, but we're seeing that the nutrients are becoming vastly less and less inside of those foods. They've done research on broccoli, vegetables, oranges, different fruits as well, showing that the same weight of fruit or vegetable has less nutrients, less vitamin C, less spinach, less calcium, less potassium, all of those things. It's a scary thing when you look at it, and it's really showing the need for us to really be educated on when we're shopping in the store to find those healthier products. So the next thing we're going to talk about is water. And again, it's weird that the first two things we're talking about are the food you put in your mouth and the water that you use to drink. Obviously, food and water keep us alive. The big problem that we're seeing now is water sources are becoming contaminated. And this is not some hidden thing. If you go to the Environmental Working Group or the EWG.org, you're going to find if you type in their water guide that you can search any public water supply and actually find out based on the latest test results, whether it's toxic, whether it has chemicals that are above EPA limits or that are above limits for known amounts of carcinogens or things like that. And I know that they found in Columbus's water source, 22 contaminants yeah. and 12 that exceed the guidelines, which is a really scary thing to think mm -hmm. about something that you're consuming every day and can't live without is contaminated. Yeah. Yeah. So we talked about nitrates in food. There are also nitrates in water supply. If you look up specifically for the Columbus water supply, nitrates are 27 times higher than the allowed EPA limit. So again, the, the limit is like 0.14 
parts per billion and there's four parts per billion. So literally 27 times higher than it should be. And so it's, it's crazy to think that we're actually putting that stuff inside of our, you know, inside of our body. What's contaminating our water? What is something, what are some changes we can make to not contaminate our water? Well, here's the challenge. I think on a personal basis, we can all do a lot of things. The biggest problems that we're seeing is groundwater contamination. Um, it's pesticides from crops. It's a lot of different chemicals that are being put into our groundwater supply. Um, you also think about the fact that we throw away a lot of pharmaceutical medications and you know those leach into our soil. The problem is we, we are actively trying to detoxify our water. I mean, we have treatment plants that are working hard to try to do that. The problem is there are so many different chemicals that are coming into our water supply that it's very hard to get all of those out of there in good supply. So, or to keep up with the technology that's going to detect all those so, chemicals, I, mean, I would imagine. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, this is, right now, I mean, this is 2021. We have very advanced water sanitation strategies, and we still are struggling with this, and it's a known problem. I've taken care of a lot of plant managers who work in the water sanitation industry, and they say the struggle is real. It's very hard for them to try to figure out on a daily basis, how to detoxify from all these chemicals because they combine to other chemicals. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, obviously not throwing away medications is a huge thing. Um, you know, we vote with every dollar we spend what we want in this world. And so if we're putting our money into terrible farming practices, into conventional foods, into fast food sources that use questionable chemicals, we're voting that we want that in our world. So while we think that we have a small role to play, we actually have a big role to play. Every vote we cast is a vote for what we want we in this spend. world. Absolutely. So I think being aware of that is a really important thing. Um, next thing with water too is, I mean, you want to talk about showering and like what that yeah, is? So <laughs> your body anyway. can repel 75% of the chemicals that it comes in contact with in the shower, mm -hmm. but it absorbs the other 25%. So yeah. taking a 15 minute shower of unfiltered regular tap water is equal to drinking eight glasses of toxic water water yeah so a 15 minute shower every day like that's going to compound and compound and compound mm -hmm. and it's just a really big issue that i would have never thought about before i did the research for yeah. this workshop yeah yeah you have things like vinyl chlorides in your water you have trichloroethylenes so whenever you're essentially like forming a steam in your shower those are things that actually get into your lungs they're known toxins and we know trichloroethylene for example is a is a vaporous chemical if you inhale it it's a carcinogen and essentially we're you know, showering with that. We're don't showering worry. with cancer? Yeah, with cancer causing chemicals. So don't worry, we're going to go for solutions and action steps for this. This is not all meant to be doom and gloom, but in the beginning, we've got to make you understand that these are issues and problems out there. And the first thing is to kind of become aware of it. It's like ripping off that Band-Aid and dealing with the pain before we get to all the action steps. Uh, next thing, environment. So just air quality in general. You know, we know it's a, it's a broad range depending on where you live, but we know that the air inside of your home is anywhere from five to a hundred times worse than it is outside. Mostly if we're talking, you know, you're living in big cities, there can be a lot of contaminants in there. And in Columbus, we are, and technically speaking, a big city. So we have air quality issues outside. We definitely have air quality issues inside. You know, it's, I think it's really important then to get outside. Yeah, I know there was a study done in 2017 that said that women that work from home oh, yeah. were 54% more likely to die from cancer. Yep. And I think we're all working from home. Most of us are working from home right now. So right. that is just increasing to everyone. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the next one is cosmetics. So don't think just because you're, you know, if you're listening in and you're, you're a guy and you're like, well, I don't wear makeup that you have to be, con don't have to be concerned about this. I mean, if you think about cosmetic products, those are soaps, those are lotions, those are Deodorants, oils, those are, de I mean, your shampoos, your you conditioners, yeah. anything that you're going to put on your skin mm -hmm. to clean yourself. Absolutely. So the skin is the largest organ on the body and our cosmetics are one of the biggest culprits for toxins in our mm -hmm. everyday life. Yep. There was a test done by the Environmental Defense and they tested 49 different makeup items and they found that 96% of them contained lead, 90% contained beryllium, yeah. all just had a very high heavy metal content. And what we know is that heavy metals can lead to cancer, mm -hmm. memory loss. Mm -hmm. A lot of effects on the body for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So choosing the right cosmetic products is really going to get you yeah, where you need to be. The problem with heavy metals is if you think about it, I mean, these are things that cross the, the blood brain barrier. So when we talk about the problems with metals, 
um, in, in whatever source they're in. There are some medications that have metals in them. There are some injections and shots that have metals in them. Um, obviously, if, we've, if we're drinking them in our water, like there's lead in our water sources sometimes, if we're getting them from cosmetic products, I mean, these things leach into our body and they're very, very difficult to get rid of. Uh, metals store themselves in either adipose tissue or in brain tissue, and they can cause a lot of problems. They can be really hard to get rid of. So, you know, before you start worrying about detoxing, the first step is stopping them from getting into your body. Um, there's a great resource below. Um, we talked about the environmental working group before they have a lot of stuff on there to help you obviously detoxify yourself and find the right healthy cleaning products. Okay. Um, next cleaners. Oh, the most toxic products in our life are the cleaning products that we use to yeah. what we think makes our home yeah. healthy, yeah. right? We want to clean yeah. with the Lysol. We want to disinfect the counters. Yeah. We want to get yeah. rid of the viruses. You keep talking. I'm going to show something. Absolutely. So those are the most toxic things in our home. Conventional cleaners are loaded with a variety of toxic chemicals, yeah. including formaldehyde, chlorine, ammonia, and more. So we keep these... We have a toxic box. <laughs> Keep the lid on them for all the dangerous chemicals that there are. So when I open this box, just to like take this stuff out to show you guys, it makes me want to throw up. It Im I immediately start to get a yeah. headache. Yeah. Like the perfumes yeah. and the dyes yeah. that are in those products immediately start to give me a headache. But the chemicals can be <laughs> extremely damaging to your health. And research shows that these can be linked to cancer, hormone imbalance, liver damage, and yeah. so much more. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys know this. If you ever walk in the, the general cleaning aisle of like a grocery store and you get that that smell, I mean, the uh, the ammonia, the chlorine, all of those chemicals. You know, you talked about the research showing that, you know, women who work from home are 54% more likely to develop cancer, right? That stuff literally affects your lungs. They've shown whoever cleans the home. Yeah. Whoever, whoever cleans the home develops more lung issues than who doesn't clean the home. So exposing yourself to these cleaners on a daily basis is one of the, honestly, I think that's one of the worst things we can do inside of our home. And that's why the chem, the air inside of our home is so toxic is because of a lot of these chemicals that we're using. I mean, if you think about it inside of your house, you have hundreds of bottles of different types of cleaning agents, dermatological agents. You know what I mean? I know you have a kid and what's the first thing you do? You lock your cabinet so they can't get into right. the chemicals underneath the sink. Right. Absolutely. And you're like, no, that's bad for that's you. That's so bad. But, but then we, we wipe it with a counter and then we eat food off of it. Absolutely. Absolutely terrible. But the good news is this is one of the easiest fixes that we'll talk about later. Yep. Cool. The last one. So the sixth one is containers. So what we store food and water in, and it makes a big difference what we're doing. We know that obviously plastics can have a lot of issues. Um, in years past, the big kind of concern was BPA. Um, and so when you go in the store now, you're not going to find BPA in any plastics, which is a good thing. But the problem is we're still using plastic to store a container. So just because they don't contain BPA doesn't mean that they're actually healthy for us. All plastics contain something called phthalates. So phthalates are what actually give plastics their moldability. Um, phthalates are hormone disruptors. We know that if children like before birth are exposed to phthalates, it directly affects their ability to produce proper amounts of hormones, including testosterone. So there are some type of phthalate induced disorders now that are being um, present in our society that are actually affecting our kids um, because they have this exposure to, to the toxic plastics that literally, unfortunately, the mom had and transferred through the placenta to the baby. Which That's is kind of a scary crazy. Thing. And if you're wondering like how you might be consuming that, if you're storing your food in plastic containers mm -hmm. and then heating that up in the microwave, those yep. plastic chemical compounds are going right into your food. And also it's been proven that the average person drinks 1,769 plastic particles from tap water Ooh. every day. Mm. Plastic in our water too. Yeah. Yeah. So we're wondering why we have this kind of chronic disease culture of obesity, of high cortisol levels, of low testosterone levels, of low sex drive, you know, of lack of energy, of these chronic conditions that are kind of perpetuating our world. And it's really hard to realize that, you know, in some extent we're doing it to ourselves with the products that we're using on a daily basis. So plastics are a huge one. Drinking, storing food containers. The other big one when it comes to cooking, you know, those containers, the the metal pans and pots that we're using, um, a lot of times we're using, unfortunately, old pans and pots um, that have scratches on them. So basically under any base layer of a pan is aluminum. 
And so if we have a lot of scratches or a lot of dings and nicks in there and we're cooking, we're actually transferring some of that aluminum, which is a heavy metal, into the food that we're eating. The other thing is perfluorooctanoic acid or PFOAs, also known as Teflon. Um, Teflon coating, you know, was all the rave in, I don't know, the 90s, the 2000s, because it was Absolutely. like this. Absolutely. It's nonstick. It's perfect. Yes. Easy oh, cleanup. Oh, and it's affordable. So the problem was, was it was this affordable, great solution, quote unquote. But what we found is that whenever you heat Teflon, it causes uh, a lot of cancer causing chemicals to be released into your foods. And so, you know, you should not be cooking with Teflon pans. You should not be heating anything up with them. Uh, you should be finding better options overall, which is what we're going to kind of start going through. All right. So we've given you, you know, the good, which is very little, the bad and mostly the ugly. What we want to go through now is the solutions or really the action steps. This is the highlight reel here. This is the things we need to start doing to start implementing all of these solution steps into our life on a daily basis. And again, like you said earlier, it's going to be, it seems overwhelming, but you just take one thing at a time right? and make small changes. It's a lifelong journey. It's nothing that's going to be right. done overnight. So just take your time. Right. And we have so many resources for you as well um, that, that we can help engage you with this. So let's, let's just start by talking about food and all the things that are going into our body when it comes to food or supplements or nutrients, things like that. Your big things, I mean, the 30,000 foot view, because we're not going to spend 30 minutes going into nutrition here. We've got a lot of resources for you guys. You need to eat clean, organic food that's not in a box. Absolutely. EWG actually has a really great list, um, the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. Yep. So I know buying or whole organic food can be pricey and overwhelming, but if you look at those lists, mm -hmm. it will give you some leeway of things you should buy organic and some things that you can do right. with not buying organic. Right. Absolutely. Find a local farmer's market or places that use regenerative farming practices to avoid nutrient depletion. So you want to be trying to get your stuff as local as possible. We want to support the farmers in our community that are actually building and growing healthy food that will sustain our body very, very well. Okay. Um, we also have a lot of resources online. So if you go to Riverside Family Chiropractic on YouTube, we have videos on there describing and walking through a lot of different nutritional approaches, including our advanced ketogenic diet, our core diet, all of those things in depth for you. Um, so you can get involved with those. We have, a, we have mountain classes that we're doing inside of our office now that are meta metabolism, toxicity, and nutrition. You can engage with those. We're going to have them virtually online as well. Um, you can read your line, your health book. Great resource. If you're a patient resources. in our office, you've received that book and it goes over most of the things that we've talked about right. today. Absolutely. So one of the things we talked about was nutrient depletion, unfortunately, in our foods. And people always ask me, you know, are there supplements I need to take? If I eat a clean diet, am I going to get enough to not have to take any supplement at all? And unfortunately, I really think that the answer is no, sadly. Even if we eat a very clean diet, I still think that a lot of times given our lifestyle, unless you're retired and you're a professional chef and you spend all day literally just preparing food, you're going to end up having some pretty key deficiencies that happen through there. So I want to talk about supplements from a big picture view for starters, because a lot of us get confused. You can walk into any Walgreens, GNC, Kroger, Walmart, wherever, and find millions of different supplements. My patients come in and say, hey, how come this supplement costs $2 and this one costs $15? And it's a difficult answer, first and foremost, because there's not a lot of regulation when it comes to supplements. What I can tell you is that you should really get good at reading labels when it comes to supplements to understanding good quality products. The products that we use in our office and that I give to any of my patients, we vet. We private label those supplements and make sure that they're healthy. But one of the things that caused me to start doing that because it's not easy to private label supplements and have to work through those. We have full-time nutritionists on staff in our corporate office that actually work through those things. The problem is, is that it's hard to beat cheap sometimes. Absolutely. People go for these cheap products and what they're not realizing is that the most affordable supplement is the one that works. The worst supplement is the one that you pay money for that actually makes you sicker. And that's what I see so commonly is when we, when I do nutrition consultations or when we do health coaching with patients, they'll bring in other supplements and they're riddled with all the bad stuff. What does that label look like on a, like not good supplement? What are the danger yeah. things that I'm looking for? Real simple. You're going to turn over the back and you're going to see additional ingredients. You're going to see artificial flavors. You're going to see artificial colors. So you're going to see the yellow, the blue dye, the red dye, all of those things. You're going to see soybean oil. You're going to see partially hydrogenated vegetable oil. You're going to see oils on there that do not say something like organic, extra virgin olive oil. 
Like, for example, yeah. if you're taking a D vitamin, that is a fat soluble vitamin, they typically store it in fat. And so if you're getting an inferior product, you're going to find one that's basically emulsified in a rancid oil. And so that's oxidized and it's going to lower the amount of nutrients that actually make it into your body. So let's say you're, you buy a vitamin D that has 5,000 IUs. You know, if you're with a rancid supplement, it's going to de degrade more quickly. So whenever it gets to your body, you're maybe only getting 20% of it where you should be getting 100% or close to that. So that's one of the big problems that I see going on through there. Um, you also have a lot of, you know, protein powders, for example. We use a, an organic bone broth protein or an organic whey protein that's sweetened with stevia. Most of the products you're going to get out there are sweetened with artificial sweeteners. So your sucralose, your aspartame, um, they're going to have artificial sweeteners like that. And you... Basically, you want to try to avoid those. You know, those cause problems with our blood sugar. Those pro cause problems with toxicity inside of our body. So you should never be buying supplements that are doing more harm than good. So vet your labels. Yes, absolutely. If we're talking the, the proper nutrients to be taking in, I think everyone should be taking a core three supplements. A good high-quality multivitamin, a vitamin D, and an omega-3 fatty acid. We get nowhere near enough omega-3 fats. Obviously, almost everyone I test is deficient in vitamin D because we don't get enough sunlight. And a good multivitamin, in my opinion, it balances out a, a deficient diet. It gets a lot of the trace nutrients and minerals that we otherwise wouldn't get because we do have problems with soil depletion and nutrient depletion. And so a good daily multivitamin is going to help you kind of balance out the deficiencies that kind of go on inside of your life. Getting specific for just a minute on the actual detoxification supplements that I highly recommend a lot of my patients use, whether we're doing the lab testing or whether you just feel like you've got a lot of toxic exposure in your life, daily detox. So that's a supplement we use that's a two-part process. The first part is natural botanical supplements like Corella, spirulina, that actually pull toxins out of our body and into our bloodstream. Now, whenever you start actively detoxifying your body, you do want to give your body a chance to catch up. So the reason it's a two-part system is the second part is an activated charcoal. So it binds those extra toxins, takes the burden off your liver, and allows that charcoal to bind and emulsify toxins to eliminate them from your body so that you're not bogging down your liver and leading to a lot of deficiencies. A lot of times when I talk to people and they say, oh, I'm going to do a detox or, oh, I'm going to do a cleanse, a lot of times they end up getting really sick during that process. And it's because you're essentially, you know, you're pulling toxins out faster than your body can get yeah, them out of your Yeah, you're making your liver and kidneys do overtime. Right. So you want to make sure that you're supplementing your liver and kidneys with proper things like milk thistle, which is in our daily detox, and acetylcysteine, which is a great supplement. Uh, that or glutathione is a sulfur donor. So whenever you take those products... They basically lend a sulfur group, which is what your liver uses to commonly detoxify your body of all the common environmental toxins that we come into exposure with. So those are two great supplements that actually help with detoxification, daily detox and N-acetylcysteine. If you're doing those properly, you're doing them at least once or twice a year if you're going through a detoxification process. Um, if you have concerns with toxicity or if you feel like your metabolism's off, if you feel like you just can't get energy back, you're sluggish, your hormones are off, we can do these tests for you now inside of our office. So whether we're ordering a hormone panel to see if you have cortisol, testosterone, or estrogen problems, or we're doing an organics or Genova metabolics test that actually tests for metabolic insufficiencies, looks at your liver, looks at your gut, looks for toxins inside of your peripheral uh, adipose tissue, we can find those things now and begin to safely eliminate and detox you from those and then retest to make sure that we're actually doing those properly. So we've got a lot of resources now for you guys to make sure that you're actually detoxing properly and getting those nutrients in that you need so you can be healthy long term. Absolutely. Cool. A um, couple other little things on detoxing your body. I just want to mention here, there are so many great different things we can do in our lifestyle that can really help with that. Um, number one, eating a healthy diet, burning off that extra body fat, working out, applying all of our essentials are really important when it comes to that. Um, you know, at home, uh, hot and cold contrast showers are a great way to spike your body's metabolism, to upregulate something called your brown adipose tissue regulation, which essentially brown adipose tissue is your fat burning fat. So when you do hot and cold showers, it helps your body start burning fat more effectively inside of your body. And fat is where, honestly, we store a lot of our toxins. So whenever we start burning fat, whether it's through working out, whether it's through hot and cold showers, whether that's through a ketogenic or a low-carbohydrate diet, we're actively allowing our body to start pulling toxins out. 
I'm a wimp when it comes to the cold. So if I'm going to try the hot and cold shower, Mm -hmm. what is my ratio? How long am I hot? How long am I cold? Yeah. So actually the best science shows 20, 20, 20 seconds on, 20 seconds off. Okay. Um, I could do 20 seconds. Cool with putting the nozzle up and down. You know what I mean? Um, That contrast is, is amazing for that specifically. Okay. Got it. Okay. Um, there's at-home saunas. There's little mini ones that you just put a blanket over yourself. Saunas to raise your body temperature is great. Um, there's new things called red light therapy, which are awesome. You don't have to have a lot of money to, to do these things. You can start just by the hot, cold contrast showers. You know what I mean? You can start by just eating cleaner. Um, the vibration platforms that we use in our office. So a lot of our patients who are using those, they don't realize that those vibration platforms actually help with lymphatic drainage. So our lymph system is what's designed to actually pull toxins out of our body and filter them out. The vibration therapy that we use after adjustments, which help hold the adjustments in place, have a side effect of increasing bone density, helping pull toxins out of your body by increasing lymphatic drainage. Um, They have a lot of good beneficial effects. Yeah. So if you're a patient, you're already started your detoxification journey and you didn't even know it. Yeah. So just continue it at home. Um, Getting adjusted really helps as well. We know that when your body is stuck or not moving properly it doesn't allow that lymphatic flow to work properly. So if you have back issues or neck problems, you know, your nervous system is one of the best detoxifiers inside of your body. You know, that's the thing that actually controls all the function, all the healing inside of our body. So if you have chronic issues, if you've got postural problems, if you have headaches, migraines, nerve issues, back pain, you know, disc issues, whatever it is, getting those fixed. So you have the energy to prepare the food. You have the energy to work out and exercise and do the things you need to do. You know, so many times we have these problems in our life and it's a vicious cycle. You know, we're injured so we can't work out. So we feel lazy. So we don't eat healthy food because we can't work out. Because we don't have the energy to do it. Right? It's that vicious cycle that takes us down and down and down. And the only way that I know to stop it is to nip in the bud whatever is causing us to not be functioning at our best. So if it's your back spine nervous system, if it's your nutrition, if it's your diet, if it's your exercise, if it's toxicity like this, you got to address it head on. You know, you can't out-exercise a poor diet. You can't out-exercise need the need for detox. Yeah, you can't out-eat a non-exercising program. Right. You need right. all the things. Right, you need all the things. That's why we have the five essentials. Chiropractic, nutrition, exercise, toxicity, and that healthy mindset to put it all together. So the next one, water. What are some solutions to fix our water problem? <sighs> yeah. I don't want to be drinking eight glasses of toxic water every day in my shower. Yeah. So what can I do? really, there's a couple simple things. So first and foremost, you know, literally just getting a, a filter for your drinking water, you can start with a, literally a $20 filter that you pour water in and it goes in your fridge. Those actually do help cut down on toxins. So you can start simply with that for your drinking water. And by putting a shower filter on your shower, you can buy them at Walmart. They're $50. And they last anywhere from six months to a year. And they just go on my shower head? They screw right under your shower head. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you can use those things. So now you're getting the two biggest exposures to water toxicity out of your, out of your life. The Easy water you fixes. drink and the water you, that you shower with. Um, if you want to go up higher levels than that, you always can. So what we did when we moved into our home is we purchased a whole home filtration system. We got it from Aquasana. There's a lot of good brands out there. I believe ours was $1,200. We paid a plumber. I think it was a few hundred dollars to install it in our home. We replace the filters every six months to a year. Um, It's a 10-year filter. So it essentially works out to being about 100 bucks a year to filter the water in our entire home. And if you're buying a Brita, you're going to spend close to that in the filters you're supposed to change yeah. every two months. Yeah. So this is a really good investment. Yeah, if you're somewhere where you know you're going to be long term, I think it's definitely worth the investment to do. Um, we used Weeks Plumbing, which is a local plumbing company. Um, one of their sons is actually becoming a chiropractor now because his life was changed inside of our office. And, you know, they worked with us to install it inside of our house. So any good plumber can do that for you. But there's layers. Don't think you have to, if you're renting an apartment right now, oh, well, there's nothing I can do. You can absolutely start engaging in these things to, to make it better. Okay. All right. um, the highest level would be getting a, in addition to a whole home filter or reverse osmosis filter. I want to just caveat that really quickly because I know a lot of people who do get those, you need to remineralize if you're going to be using a reverse osmosis filter. Um, Reverse osmosis takes all the minerals out of 
water, all the trace minerals and nutrients. So you want to make sure that you get remineralizing drops if you're drinking the water so that you're actually getting the minerals and the trace nutrients that you need inside of your water. And I think too, I've seen advertised at like places that you go out to eat. They're like reverse osmosis water. Yeah. So is the mineral drop something that you, is like portable yeah, and you can portable. take with you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, again, if I'm out at a restaurant and they're advertising that, I'm thinking, well, that's probably better than straight tap water. You know what I mean? But um, you do have to be careful with your water. Um, and don't even get me started on bottled water. Um, there's so much problems with that. A lot of those are just municipal water sources. Um, you know, if you're getting anything, it needs to be like fresh actually from a spring. Read the labels. Don't be buying bottled tap water, please. And wasting all the plastic in our society and all that stuff. It just drives me Something we'll put in the links below that I found doing the research for this workshop is there's a map that you can look at that shows you all the natural springs in Ohio, which is just a fun thing that you could like go collect your own natural Natural spring water. water. If you like to be outdoors like I do, it's something we're going to work on this summer is hitting those natural spring spots. That's so cool. So cool. So the next, let's talk about your environment. So inside the home environment, what are some of the things that we can be doing to improve our air quality where we're living? Absolutely. Opening your windows as often as you can to let the fresh air in is Mm -hmm. going to be the biggest change that you can make. So on those nice days, make sure your windows are open. You're getting a nice draft. Open the doors too so the air is really moving. But removing your toxic cleaners and not using toxic chemicals inside your home is going to be another big one. Make sure you're changing your air filter. Yep. That's huge. Um, yep. And you're checking for mold and wet spots often. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we have a, a shower that's like enclosed at the top. And, you know, we always clean like the bottom of the shower and things like that. Well, one day I like looked up and I never thought to clean the ceiling of this because it's not ventilated out and there was mold growing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, So mold spores get into your lungs and they can cause a lot of problems with toxicity. They can cause a lot of neurological inflammation as well. Really difficult to get out there. And so you want to be very obviously careful with that. What is the best way you found to clean mold? Because I know if you Google clean mold, the first thing they're going to tell you is to use bleach. But what were you able to use? Vinegar. That's all you need. (laughs) Yeah. So I, in all honesty, the funny thing is I, I hate the smell of vinegar, but I use it to clean because other things it's don't a, like it's it. It's a smell I've learned well. to love. Yeah, right. So um, next, let's talk about cosmetics. Okay, so these yeah. are the in the home house items that you're putting on your skin and your body. Yeah, and we're not just talking to the ladies here. We're talking to the guys again as well. Mm-hmm. Your shampoos, your conditioners, yep. your lotions, all of the things that you're going to be applying to your skin on a daily basis. Yep. The biggest resource we have for you guys on this is the EWG website. Yes. They actually have a really cool app. You can download the app onto your phone and you can just scan the barcode of a product yep. and it's going to immediately tell you on a scale of one to 10 how dangerous that product may be for you. And it's also mm-hmm. going to give you some options of things to replace it with. Yep. Yeah, they're awesome. They independently verify and certify more than 80,000 personal cosmetic and hygiene products. And so that's like one of the best resources that you can use. Um, Some simple things, Uh, big things, especially for guys and girls, deodorant, aluminum free, please. Uh, You can even get baking soda free ones as well. If that irritates your skin, there's a lot of good charcoal based deodorants out there that don't make you smell like a, you know, bag of butts throughout the day. Um, uh, Non-toxic products. Look at the back of your labels. Realize if you're going to a big box store, and you're buying the cheapest cleaning products or the cheapest personal hygiene products there, they're going to be laced. And I mean laced. It's cheap because products. they put a lot of chemicals in it to stretch out the product. Absolutely. So that's why it's cheap. Absolutely. Cheap isn't best for your health. No, no. You're going to save more long term by getting the healthier stuff. A dollar here is $10 spent in the hospital. I you know, know I mean? when I was first working on detoxing our home and I looked at our cosmetics, I was like, oh my gosh, it's going to cost me a ton of money to replace everything. Just replace things as you finish your last, as you finish that last bottle of shampoo, replace it with something yep. that's going to be better for your body. Just do one thing at a time and you'll be on the right track. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. And be picky with everything. Like don't assume with any of your products that they're just naturally healthy and don't get overwhelmed. Just one step at a time, one step at a time. Um, let's talk about household cleaners. Oh, this is my jam. I know. So this is my favorite, <laughs> favorite thing. She loves cleaning. I you can come to my house anytime. We had an office cleaning party 
I called it a party. Everyone else didn't think it was a party. It's yeah. very exciting. But I want you to know that you just need a few basic items to make any cleaning product that you need. Mm -hmm. You need vinegar, baking soda, salt, and essential oils. The essential oils aren't necessary, but they do help with the smell. Yeah. So if you're like Dr. Thomas and you hate the vinegar smell, the essential oils are going to help get rid of that yeah. for you. But I use... What's wrong with lavender and lemon and... You know, I eucalyptus love it. and all rosemary and or you go girl, all the things, right? Yep. So we're going to, in the links below is a DIY cleaning guide recipes. Mm -hmm. So when you are making those at home, I do want you to remember that you're using chemical free containers. So you're going to want to use glass spray bottles. You don't want to be using plastic spray bottles and just leaching chemicals right back into your clean cleaner, but know that this is going to be the easiest thing to fix it's cheap vinegar i think is two dollars a gallon yeah so it's going to be the quickest way to start you on your detoxification process so easy so cheap so yep. awesome yep very simple thing and we had the box out i mean if you smell your other cleaners that's awful you can just smell what it does and imagine what that's doing to feel like it's burning my lungs out and that's what it is doing so get rid and of I it. think a hard thing for people is they want their laundry i know even for my husband he's like i need a scent in my life like I can't do with like this <laughs> non-scented everything. So you can add a few drops of essential mm -hmm. oil to your laundry when it's washing. But then mm -hmm. also if you get some wool dryer balls and put a few drops of essential oils on there when you're drying your clothes, you'll get a nice yeah. scent if yeah. that's what you're going to miss. Yeah. Funny story. Um, we had one of uh, Tristan's family visiting from Vietnam. It's my wife. And uh, she saw all the essential oils next to the dryer, skipped the lavender and grabbed the oregano. Bad idea. <laughs> Our whole house smelled like a burnt pizza oven. It was gross. Um, okay, so next, let's talk about containers. Um, so these are things you store your food and water in, obviously, or even your cleaning products in. Um, let's talk about the pans and pots first and foremost. Uh, you've got to check your pans for scratches. So under any pan is aluminum. So if you have scratches on your pans, they're no longer safe to be used because you're literally cooking and you're leaching aluminum into your food and you're going to eat it. And it's really bad, obviously. Absolutely. And if you have a coating on your pan that has scratches, then your that coating is full of chemicals too. Right. So the best product to use are going to be stainless steel pans. Right. Absolutely. Stainless steel pans are the best to cook with overall. Um, and before we started, Tasha asked this question. She said, okay, I use stainless steel pans, but can someone please tell me how to cook an egg? Yeah, so I cannot scramble an egg in my stainless steel pan. I get so frustrated. So you have to temper the pan first. So it's oil in medium heat and it has to get to the point where it has a shimmer to it so it's not smoking but it's shimmering and at that level it'll like literally the heat and the oil will create a seal so it doesn't stick okay. so if you i always did this i'd put them in early and the egg literally spot welds itself to the pan and you can't get it off so you have to preheat the pan with the oil in it medium low to medium heat if you're using olive oil for eggs or butter and let it get to a, almost like a shimmer, and then you can drop them in. Yeah, that's the Perfect only problem that I ran into mm -hmm. when I made the switch to stainless steel. Everything else cooks so nice, and they clean up so fast and easy. Yep. yep. Um, no steel wool. If you're um, uh, using your pans, you want to use like a gentle cloth. It's going to help them last longer. Um, if you're using steel wool, you're going to scratch that surface off. Okay. Um, next, for storage containers, obviously, we're going to get rid of plastics. So no heating of plastics, no storing of food or water in plastic containers at leaches. So you want to use glassware whenever Absolutely. possible. Absolutely. Your Tupperware should be glassware, Pyrex. Yep. Um, just ditch those plastic containers. Yeah. Yeah. If you're doing drinking bottles, glassware or stainless steel works great. Um, you know, they're good insulators as well. It's just little simple changes. That plastic water bottle that you love that you got at a conference eight years ago isn't serving you good anymore. You know what I mean? You can find glass water bottles for, for dollars and it makes a huge difference to your long-term health overall. Easy fixes, one thing at a time. Beautiful, yeah. So to kind of wrap up everything with this, there was a, a kind of an overarching theme with this is that it's it's one day at a time. Don't overwhelm yourself and realize that you little things make big changes. With every dollar we spend, we're casting a vote for what we want in this world. So you voting for more non-toxic, healthier products makes the world better for all of us. We have tons of resources for you guys. So if you're new to this and just watching for the first time, 
Check us out online. Give our office a call. We want to help you, whether you're near or far, become the healthiest version of yourself. If you're a patient of ours, obviously we want you to keep getting more and more engaged with being intentional towards making healthier decisions for yourself and your family. So whether your next step with us is coming to a workshop or starting to coach with us or doing more testing or just being more consistent with your adjustments, we want to help you engage in those and be healthy today, tomorrow, and for the rest of your life. For us here, signing off, this is Dr. Thomas again. I'm Tasha. Tasha Ridings, and thanks for joining us on your detox journey. Cool. We'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye. Be good. Bye.